Hello, I'm Emma. I'm the National Volunteering Manager at a charity called Refugee Action. Um, I'm really sorry that I can't be with you in person today um, and thank you very much Fiona for inviting me to um, the conference and allowing me to speak via video um, and to really explain about um, what the Right to Volunteer campaign was and how we achieved the success that we did. Um, so what I want to do really is to talk to you about three steps um, which we took, which achieved the success of, of changing uh, government guidance. Um, and before I begin, I should just say that um, you know, the, being the, the term asylum seeker is, is a very complex one, um, and I haven't got time to explain in detail what it means here. And do look at our website, or um, I've talked to other delegates here who work with asylum seekers. But basically, an asylum seeker is someone um, who is seeking safety in this country. Um, from persecution um, back home and um, has been given accommodation mostly on a no choice basis um, and single asylum seekers live on £5.23 um, a day and um, they're not allowed to work. So um, asylum seekers uh, in very many cases only have their free time um, and many people want to use this free time in a really positive way um, whilst they're waiting to hear the outcome of, of their asylum claim. Um, so. We were very upset um, to, to get to work with one of our volunteers, Hamid, who received a letter to say that he was not allowed to volunteer because he'd been refused asylum. And when we saw this letter, at first we were a little bit confused uh, because we'd actually spoken to the Home Office back in 2008 around whether the, you know, volunteering was uh, you know, illegal or illegal um, and we thought we got it straight. But the uh, guidance had been updated and uh, it had now said that um, if you are um, a refused asylum seeker, you must not volunteer. Um, and if you are an asylum seeker waiting for your decision, uh, you can only volunteer for a charity. Which, of course, is very limiting because I'm sure there are many organisations uh, represented here today who aren't just um, a registered charity but might be um, public sector, social enterprise and, and other types of organisations. So, what did we do about this? Well, um, step one, uh, the first thing we wanted to do was to find out the scale of the problem and gather some evidence about that. Um, so we reached out to other organisations that we knew and we put the word out on the grapevine um, and to our shock and horror we discovered that this problem uh, was happening um, in Wales, Scotland and England and up and down the country. Um, in Scotland, um, people want, were being uh, prevented from volunteering at the Commonwealth Games because the organising committee of the Commonwealth Games looked at the guidance and said, oh, well, we're not a charity, so asylum seekers can't volunteer for us, um, so uh, you, you, you can't join in. Um, in Portsmouth, there was a family, a mum and dad and two teenage kids, and they were waiting for their asylum claim, and um, the daughter was uh, volunteering in her local college, and uh, she was told on a home visit by a case official, um, stop volunteering, you're not allowed to volunteer in a college or you'll pay a £7,000 fine, which was really terrifying to this family and, um, and, they, and they obviously just stopped, stopped the volunteering straight away. So um, very quickly, working with other organisations, we started to gather this picture of the scale and the extent of the problem that the guidance was causing. Um, so what did we do with all of that evidence? Um, well, step two, we had to think about the relationships that we had uh, with with the Home Office and the, the, how we could use this. Um, and uh, Refuge Action is a national charity and has worked with the Home Office on a number of policy issues and has um, and had, had a number of challenges in court with the Home Office in, in previous years and also received uh, government money to run services. So we had quite an established relationship with Home Office teams and because of this we were able to um, write a letter, represent all the organisations who had submitted evidence um, and send that to the asylum policy team and we were able to get a meeting with them. And um, at the meeting it became apparent very quickly that the Home Office had absolutely no idea about what volunteering was um, and uh, little understanding of either its benefits or actually you know, where it stood in relation to employment and their focus was to prevent people from illegally working um, and because they didn't understand the difference between voluntary work, um, sort of technical difference and volunteering, they had just created this hybrid definition and just said basically don't do it. 
Um, and if you're thinking, hmm, what is the difference between volunteering and voluntary work, then um, do check out our website. We've got some links to some guidance and I should reference the excellent Sheffield Volunteer Centre who've done a lot of work on this and have got some great resources, so do have a look at that. Um, so uh, when we explained to the Home Office um, what the impact was of preventing people from volunteering and how their guidance was wrong and we used examples for example we had a lady who wanted to be a classroom reading assistant in her child's school and wasn't allowed to do so uh, there was a man who wanted to work in his library and wasn't able to do so he wanted to volunteer there should I say um, and he and they they started to see actually that by preventing people from engaging in their communities and donating their time to their communities um, it wasn't beneficial either to the Home Office or to UK Society or to asylum seekers. So they agreed to change their guidance, which was great. Um, and so we left the meeting feeling really positive, but of course then um, comes the waiting game. So that really uh, leads me to step three. What did we do then? Because uh, we had been assured that the guidance would be looked at, but uh, nothing happened. And a couple of months went by and there was absolutely nothing from the Home Office at all. So we decided to um, have a look at how could we sort of keep this issue really alive and how could we make other people aware of this issue as well. Um, and that's uh, when we spoke to the communications team at Refuge Action and um, it's been said before but never underestimate uh, your communications appetite for uh, content put on their website and the, the um, opportunity and the chance to make a noise about the work that you're doing. So very quickly the comms team had developed um, you know, the, a name for the, for the campaign, Right to Volunteer, and they'd produced a booklet which really set out what the problem was and they had created an online petition so people could add their voice to this issue. Um, and it was a great thanks um, firstly to organisations like yourselves that you supported the campaign um, and spread it out through your networks and also to our Refuge Action supporters who uh, really got behind the injustice of people not being able to use their free time um, in a way that they chose and uh, supporting the campaign and spreading it through their networks too. So within about two weeks we had 1,500 names on the petition which was brilliant. Um, and we handed the petition in. One of our volunteers, Nabil, who had been affected by this issue himself, uh, went to Great Martian Street and handed in the petition to the Home Office there. Um, and secondly, we had a th uh, think about how else can we keep the pressure on the Home Office. And um, we looked again at the relationships that we had across the sector. And one of the forums that we had was the National Asylum Seekers Stakeholder Forum, which um, was attended by both the Home Office and voluntary sector partners. So, um, as pained as I am to say it, there's sometimes something very useful about a meeting and its minutes. Um, it's not the most sexy um, sort of, of devices, but they can be effective because what we did was put it on the agenda of this meeting, and so it was minuted. Um, and the Home Office were there, and all the voluntary sector together at this forum said, what are you doing about this issue with volunteering? And the Home Office said, oh yes, yes, we're doing something about it. Well, of course, the months ticked by, and then at the next meeting, the actions were checked, or what are you doing about it still? Um, and the pressure was able to, to be put on the Home Office to change the guidance quickly. Um, so, after about 15 months, we finally got a letter from the Home Office, and it said, yes, we agree, volunteering um, is, is illegal, isn't, isn't illegal amongst asylum seekers, um, anyone can take part in it, um, that there is a difference between voluntary work and volunteering and we will extend the guidance um, and, and sort of the ability of people to take part in volunteering beyond the charity sector and in the public sector as well. Now they didn't go as far as just saying volunteering can be enjoyed by all, um, maybe that's the subject of its campaign. So what's happening about that now? Well, the guidance was officially published on the 1st of April and I'd like to be able to say that it was um, just really plain sailing and it was really uh, widely implemented and, and people were, were not being prevented from volunteering anymore. Unfortunately, things are never quite that straightforward and um, at the same time as the guidance was published, a memo was sent round to Home Office teams to highlight the fact that the guidance now said there's a difference between voluntary work and volunteering. Um, and 
as, as we all know, that those nuances between what voluntary work is and what volunteering is are, are very subtle. And so when an asylum seeker has been going into it, visit the Home Office and saying, I'm doing some voluntary work for the Red Cross, I'm doing some voluntary work for my child's school, um, Home Office teams have been saying, oh no, you're not allowed to do that, you, you must desist straight away. And um, so people are still receiving this message that actually um, they're not allowed to volunteer, which is which is to do with the, with the wording and the guidance. So we're in the middle of writing to the Home Office about this, uh, we're sending in evidence about that, um, and you know, just as, as, as in the previous campaign, um, the evidence that you send into us really helps to show the impact of this guidance. So um, I would just really urge you, if you come across anyone who's still being told that they can't volunteer, please get in touch with me, um, send me just a quick brief summary um, of, of what the situation is and we can keep the pressure on. Um, but really it's with thanks to everyone here uh, for making this policy change happen. So that's about it for me. I'm sorry that I'm not there to take your questions directly and comments, but Fiona is going to um, create a summary of any comments or questions and send them to me, and then I can make sure that all those answers are, are sent by the delegates. Um, so it just leaves me to wish you have an excellent conference, and thanks very much for listening. Thank you. Bye.